Good morning, my babes and babies. I need to pick a key, but I'm your resident active advocate, and I'm actually here today to talk to you about a very good book called Gathering Blue, and yes, it is actually a coincidence that I am wearing blue. Um, so, okay, yesterday I think I forgot to provide the spoiler warning for, for, um, what, shit, what's it called? Cracking India by Babsi Sidwa. So, spoiler warning for Cracking India by Babsi Sidwa, but also spoiler warning for Gathering Blue. Now, for those of you who have not read this book, it is the direct sequel to The Giver, also by Lois Lowry. These are both by Lois Lowry, duh. And this book does not concern the character you are introduced to in The Giver. It concerns a girl from another village. Her name is Kira. And this, I do believe, is the only post-apocalyptic that I will be talking about. But basically what happens in this book is that in Kira's culture, people are basically reverted to the hunter-gatherer state. They all live in cottages and things like that. They don't live in, cave in caves, but they have ostensibly reverted to the hunter-gatherer way. And the society is incredibly patriarchal, incredibly pyramidal, you know, and there are people at the top of the pyramid, the people, the men who can hunt, and the men who can think, and the men who can read, and there are people at the bottom of the pyramid. Kira is one of those. She is a girl who had been born with a clubbed foot, and she is unable to use that leg very effectively. She can more or less drag it on the ground, but it's only her one leg that is what they would call sound, and she uses a cane to walk as well. Her father is killed on a hunt, and he had been a very influential person in their village, but she lives with her mother, and what happens with Kira is that her skill as an artist is found out by the ruling body of their society, which consists entirely of men and entirely or almost entirely of hunters or at least of former hunters because a lot of them may be too old at this point for hunting. So what happens with the council is that when Kira's mother dies, they are made aware of her skill as a weaver. Um, what uh, what she does as an artist is that she she weaves these beautiful patterns out of out of colored thread, and most of the clothing worn by the people in the village um, is like gray or white. It doesn't have any color to it. But once a year, it is part of their culture and almost part of their religion that they hear the song that describes the history of the entire world before their people came to be. And the singer wears this beautiful robe on which is depicted the whole history of humanity. You see patterns and drawings and pictures everywhere in the tiniest possible details. And Kira's mother had had some skill at weaving. So she had been called upon several times by the council to repair the robe, but she had never been called upon to do anything more than, you know, just fix this frayed little spot on the sleeve or, you know, on the shoulder or whatever, right? So Kira has seen the robe before. She knows, well, um, everyone in the community has seen the robe before because they've all been to the yearly ceremony. And she knows how complex it is, and it catches her attention, because it's this beautiful work of art. But the one thing that the robe does not have is the color blue. And in this book, blue largely symbolizes good, because, you know, Kira talks about the blue that is held in the dome of the sky, and how unattainable these things are, and how blue is something to which you can aspire as an artist because in their community they don't have any blue and that corresponds to the fact that they are a largely very quote savage 
people. I don't like that word. I hate that word, in fact. Um, I don't believe in savage versus civilized, but they're very cruel to one another. And when Kira's mother dies, there is the threat, the palpable threat, that she will be exiled from the community because even at birth, most of the time, people with disabilities are in this culture thrown into the field of the dead. So even if they're still alive as an infant, if they have a disability that would, quote, slow them down as an adult, then they are thrown into the field and left to die. That had been a threat that had faced Kira at her birth, but her father had been a man of power. He died before Kira was born, and her mother advocated for her. Look at her eyes. Look at her hands. She has these beautiful, bright eyes and these beautiful, well-formed hands. You know, she is a person. Even as an infant, her mother said that she is a person of value. When Kira grows up into an artist, that is the only skill that saves her because the community requires her skill. The robe itself is in a great deal of need of repair and what the, what the chief councilman want her to do is to restore the robe. And then the back of the robe is not patterned yet. They say that they want her to be the weaver of the future. The future is supposed to be told on the back of the robe. Kira finds out exactly how this society works. And there are other artists who live with her in the building where all the counselors live, or at least where they hold their meetings and things like that. It's called the edifice. It's the only very large and very grand building in the community that has survived the great burning, which basically in my mind hints at a nuclear war that had happened in this society or in and around this society, you know, and everything went up in flames. But the, but the robe always tells of these cycles of destruction and rebirth, destruction and rebirth, destruction and rebirth. And what the councilmen want is for Kira to weave stasis. They want it all to remain the same forever so that they can stay in charge forever. And Kira knows that this is a bad thing. The other artists who live with her have also lost their parents in freak accidents. Wink! Because their skills had been discovered by the counselors who needed them for their skills. So this book talks about the importance of artistic skill, but its real importance lies in your ability to express it spontaneously and not to be controlled by the things that other people want you to do with it. You know, if you're a musician, you write your own songs. If you're a carver, she meets a singer and a carver. If you're a carver, you carve your own things. If you're a weaver in Kira's case, she, the way her skill is discovered by the councilman is that she has this beautiful piece of woven cloth in her, par in her pocket and she shows it to them. And they say, oh, wow, okay, so your skill far exceeds your mother's. So they want her to complete the future, which is the future that they want. But it's not the future that she wants, because hers is a society of brutality. If she had not been noticed for her skill, she would have been thrown to the field when she was an infant. If she had not had a powerful father who, whose reputation had preceded him, and who had been married to a woman of great willpower who advocated for her daughter at birth, Kira would have been thrown to the field. So that's, that's the way in which that society works. But I believe that is also rather an analog for our own society. There's this whole narrative of the quote, sorry, super crip, which says that unless you have a specialized skill, you have to work even harder as a person with a disability to be even considered normal, quotation marks, just to break even. But if you are a child prodigy, I'm talking Stevie Wonder, I'm talking Stephen Hawking, 
you know, if you are a prodigy in your field, then society has use for you, not otherwise. That is the narrative that I want to undo. And I think that that was the narrative that Lois Lowry looked at and said, no, 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 that isn't going to work. So that's my coverage and analysis of Gathering Blue, which is a wonderful, wonderful book. And if you haven't read it, read The Giver first, but then read Gathering Blue, because the four books in this series build upon one another, but you don't see until the very last book how they all join up together. So read all four. There's The Giver, Gathering Blue, Messenger, and Sun, S-O-N, not S-U-N. And all four of them are excellent, but Gathering Blue is the one with the greatest disability narrative in it, which is why I picked this one, because it's a very good book, as I say. And it has a lot to say in the way of social commentary, which I also like. All right, so I will see y'all tomorrow to talk about our next book, and I can't remember what the next book is on the list, but I have a list, so that'd be great. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Mm-hmm.